we begin this week marking a one-year anniversary of the attack on the U.S. Capitol, finding ourselves only slightly less divided than we were then, and that's an optimist view, I know. Uh, New Jersey survived the governor's election just a couple of months ago with little ill effect, but that doesn't mean that our politics isn't showing some signs of fraying. Let's talk about that and more with our roundtable guest, Republican Senator Declan O'Scanlan. Senator, good to see you, man. Happy New Year. Good to see you too, David, and Happy New Year to you and uh, the rest of the panel. Have you have you been reflecting much on January 6, 2021, what it meant then and, and how much the sentiments that inspired those attacks are, are still around? Look, it's it's part of our history now, right? It's never gone away. It's uh, there. There are very few things that happen in our lives uh, societally that we know are going to be in the history books going forward for the next 50 years. January 6 is one of those things. Uh, we have to live with it. We have to learn from it. Uh, and as this country always has figured out how to make ourselves better uh, by virtue of the, the understanding the mistakes we've made uh, and the issues we faced. And I think we're doing that. Some thoughts. I mean, what do you what do you say to people who bring this up with you, um, you know, while you're out there in the district? There seems to be when I'm chatting with people now, uh, an inclination to to begin to be more reflective and deliberative rather than reactionary. And I'm hoping that's the seed of a new period of um, civil debate, if not complete cooperation. Uh, I see it in the state legislature. I think we saw the elections this year in New Jersey have given some perspective to my friends on the other side of the aisle, uh, maybe given emboldened folks on my side of the aisle a little bit, but not to the point where I think that it offsets the inclination of, of my friends on the other side of the aisle to, to begin to understand that they need to take into account some of the things we say and some of the things that they're hearing from their constituents. They can't just act in a, in a, uh, a bubble and imagine that there won't be any repercussions. I think that's good. I feel like and you're I almost. Can, uh, I feel like you're almost equating um, opposition um, and and what happened at the the U.S. Capitol. I mean, it's one thing to to say, "Hey, I voted for Trump." It's quite another to to you know tear gas a cop, right? Look, I don't forgive that. I was one of the first people to speak out while it was happening. By the way, it was disgusting, yeah. and it it just can't happen. And look. I think what we've seen in the aftermath, uh, whatever crescendo of, of emboldenedness certain elements in our society had that led to January 6th, that's not going to happen again anytime soon. We've seen the prosecutions. We've seen some level of uh, significant sober assessment about it. So I'm not fearful that we're going to see anything like that happen again, uh, hopefully in our lifetimes. So I think the lessons were learned. Now we have to move forward and see how we can turn those lessons into uh, some productive advancement in our debate and our deliberation. We can't stay this polarized uh, for forever, uh, you know, unless we want to assume that forever is a, a finite existence of our country, that, which I'm right. not willing to accept. Uh, so I think that, I, look, I'm not worried that we're going to see a series of, of January 6th. Not going to happen. Uh, so for me, right. it's now let's move on, figure out how we could be productive and work together. All right, let's talk about this governor's race closer than anyone expected. Did the Democrats just stay home or are Republicans, as you suggested, resurgent in New Jersey? I think it's a combination of the two, but you can't deny that uh, there's, there's a segment of the Republican or the even slightly Republican-leaning moderates uh, out there who ordinarily wouldn't come out for a governor's race. A lot of these folks, I bet you once we do the postmortem and we see how many formerly one of four voters, people that would only vote in a presidential race, for instance, came out, how, in, how large was the increase in the turnout of those people? I bet it's significant. Uh, so I think it is a resurgence, uh, not just of Republicans, but of people becoming more aware of how their government uh, impacts their lives. And certainly the, the pandemic 
has uh, focused a lot of people on that. Uh, I'm thinking about the assembly members who made a, a scene at the uh, chamber doors uh, a couple of months ago or a few weeks ago. Um, I'm wondering if they really represent the party in New Jersey and whether that confirms that the Republicans in New Jersey are the party of Trump. Uh, no, I don't think that's the case. We certainly have a sizable uh, portion of New Jersey. It's not just Republicans. Uh, the number of people that I talk to who are, who are Democrats who say that Trump is, is speaking to them is significant. Uh, but we have a, New Jersey has always had a wide swath, uh, and certainly the Republican Party within New Jersey has had a wide swath of, of broad depth of differing philosophies. Uh, and, you know, we run from arch conservatives to, uh, to extreme moderates, if, that, if, I can, if I can be contradictory, uh, but the folks that are decidedly in the middle. Um, and, yeah. and the party still appeals to those folks, uh, both, the, the, the whole spectrum, actually. And you have to in New Jersey because Republicans can't win without all of those components. There are people that say, the moderates that say, we need to reject the Trump wing. There are folks in the Trump wing that say, we need to reject the moderates. Well, they're both wrong because Republicans don't win in New Jersey by any more than a few points. So you need everybody. Uh, and we need to accept that. So you got the state of the state speech coming up next week. Um, I guess you can probably guess what the governor is likely to talk about. You want to take uh, 15, 20 seconds that I have to give a, a preemptory response? <laughs> uh, look, I appreciate right now uh, uh, some of the, the governor's uh, different track, realizing that uh, you know he has not come back, uh, as many people predicted, and uh, tried to inflict massive lockdowns, et cetera. Uh, I think it's overreached the, uh, his request for uh, a 90-day extension of all of his, or many of his EOs, which I don't think the legislature is inclined to give on either side of the aisle. Um, I, look, the, the governor needs to permit the legislature to be the co-equal branch of government that it is supposed to be, and we'll have better government in New Jersey for it, uh, rather than you know, the governor speaking from on high from his, uh, his silo. Uh, so um, whatever his speech is, and now I guess it's going to be Zoomed and recorded, uh, so I'm not sure how many people are going to listen to it. Uh, we all will, but I'm not sure how many folks outside that, that realm. But the legislatures are surging now, uh, and the, the smarter, more moderate voices on both sides of the aisle are resurgent. And I think that's going to be a good thing for New Jersey going forward. All right, folks will be able to see that uh, speech, by the way, as the uh, file gets unfurled uh, Tuesday at 5 o'clock on NJPBS. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to plug that. Uh, Senator Declan O'Scanlan, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, good to see you. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Dave.